Hi, welcome back to a nomad tale. In Eve, like in life, we tend to obsess over progress. If we're not always doing bigger and better things, we feel left out. But this doesn't have to be the case. The litmus test is, and always will be, are you enjoying yourself? So, just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Yeah, so we got ourselves a vital core reservoir here. This is the most uh, profitable gas site in the game in terms of raw value per site. However, it is not the most valuable for ninjing. I think the instrumental takes that uh, crown. But this is the only site in the game that we actually still do a regular ninja on. For all perimeter sites, we clear the rats and full clear it. For frontier, we do the same, but with a bigger ship. And for instrumentals, we do the Jedi mind trick. That leaves only this site left as a site that we would consider ninjing. So basically what we do is run it back to when we started this. We rush the cloud with the most value and we immediately put all of our scoops on it and we just sit here until the rats come or someone chases us off, right? So um, I will note that this site in particular, the cloud of 320, which is the valuable stuff, is really tiny. It's so small, it's 20 kilometer radius, right? So someone could come here and like bubble like three of them at once. I'm not sure if that's by design or what, but it's pretty funny. Um, so when I do do this ninja of this vital core, I like to be a little bit alert and descan as much as possible. But again, venture is not a huge deal. Um, yeah, so we'll collect this money. I don't know how much it ends up being, I do forget, but it's definitely worth the ninja if you can ever find 320. It's very valuable, even after the gas has dramatically lowered in value, so. Yeah, every time I see a Vital Core Reservoir, I'm pretty happy. Uh, as long as the rats aren't there already, so cool. Okay, so that was 19 minutes and 25 seconds when those rats spawned. We got 20 mil times 3, 60 mil in estimated. Not so bad. Get a little closer, make sure nobody's bubbling us. 60 mil for uh, 19 minutes or however much I said. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's like 180 mil an hour. Divided by 3, 60 mil an hour per venture. It's a little bit below where you would hope to be, but still worth the time. Okay, so here's a funny problem I just ran into. With all of these hardener modules I've just anchored, <laughs> I can't actually online the SMA anymore, which is kind of funny. So if I go to manage right here, and we go to structures, here we go. Hmm. So, looks like, yeah, we'll just un offline one of these and put it back. Something like that. Seems reasonable. So if I put that offline, now we should be able to put the SMA online. Yeah? So we'll probably have to take one of the hardeners away forever because I'm not doing this every time. No way. Let's see. Okay, so now this comes online. So I could take one hardener away, maybe one of these away. Not sure what I want to do yet. Okay, so I found this system. It's a class two with a class two and a low sec static. And there's just like a ton of hacking sites in here. Well, I guess four, but I mean, for a non shattered system, four relic sites, that's pretty nice. So we're gonna take these relic sites and then, uh, That'll probably be it for today, but, uh, man, i really love to see this. Garistas are very, very, very good, too, so Let's see what we got from there, and hopefully it's a fair amount when we're all said and done. Okay, so I just 
uh, how to chain to a low sex system that's pretty close to Jitta. And I decided to move a lot of stuff out, so we just took like... It was like six trips or more and moved a bunch of stuff out. It was uh, 72,000 M3. So basically I'm going to run into Jitta. The reason why we took all the fuel out is because we're going to switch over to an Amar Tower. Um, among other things, so... Yeah, we need to change the fuel that we use, sadly. Can't use any type of fuel for passes like Citadel, so... Yeah, we're gonna bring this stuff to Jitta with the blockade runner, and then, um... Start with the deep space transport, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, so I guess this is kind of an impromptu move, but, um... We've decided to move into that quiet class 2. With the, uh, class 2 and low statics. Um, to do that, we're going to put another tower down, and we're going to fill it up with fuel and strut, and then downtime comes, we'll move the orca into the system, and then the next day we'll move the orca from its spot to the tower, so it'll be a two-day move. And I'll try to show you both of those moves real quick. But essentially, we want to move from the uh, class 4 with a Two and a five static because it's a bit high traffic we've been there for a long time I'd like to move maybe try some new things and I think having the low sec static is gonna be kind of neat might be able to go outside in low sec and do some scanning as well so yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot um, see what happens I'm not gonna seed my old home because it's okay maybe I will actually give it to somebody who needs it or something but yeah so long story short um, we're gonna go ahead and move here. Uh, impromptu. We're not really thinking about who we're gonna hunt with this move. We're just kind of moving. Just enjoying the uh, mobility of the setup, so. Pretty cool. And uh, we're gonna talk about some other stuff, but with this move, we're gonna update our tower so that it can dissuade cheap bash setups a lot easier. So, you can see some of the modules we're gonna be using to do that. So we have hardeners and more guns and some jams and some webs and there's a disruptor as well. So those modules, you're going to see them on the pass at some point. And those are pretty much designed to counter those bash oracles we saw before. They're not really going to stop a real fleet, so... Yeah, our philosophy is changing a bit. We're um, adding a bit of defense to our setup because so far the only people who have really threatened us existentially was rat and they just came in bash ship so if this stops that might as well put it up right keep reacting to the threats that are in front of us so anyway we're gonna anchor this tower we're gonna anchor some mods we're gonna load it with helium put some strong in it and then when downtime comes in a couple hours we're gonna move the orca into the system and start to use this pass instead and then we'll send the crane back in the other system scoop the old pass up and that'll be it Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm moving my orca at downtime. But instead of the now standard one move, one downtime, I'm going to experiment with a kind of audible, if you will. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to warp to the hole. I'm going to see what happens. If I like what I see, I'm going to go through the hole. I'm going to hold the cloak. If I still like what I see, I'm going to web my orca with my other characters, and then he's going to warp off to a safe in the new system. If at any point I don't like what I see, I'll simply let the orca stay put. Hold the gate cloak, etc. Buy time, stall. Uh, I think it is such that there's really only one scenario in there where I can get caught, and if that happens, so be it. But I think I'm actually going to be good. I'm going to warp now. Yorka. So we're going ahead and going to scan our hole. Yorka's in movement, right? You got to remember, now that I know he's going to land on this wormhole, if somebody jumps me, or some crazy stuff happens, I can simply sit here and then jump through the hole and hold gate cloak, right? 
I also have a warp invulnerability for 10 seconds, but that's not really happening. So what we're going to do is decloak both characters on our tier 3s. Okay. Now, Loki's going to go through. New York is right here, just sitting right on that hole, having a good time. Okay. Now on the Loki, we reapproach. Now, because I think I'm good, everything's looking a okay. We're gonna jump. Now here's the cool part. So this orca warps here. One more D-scan. Orbit works here. Now we target the Orca and web it. I'm not going to be able to web with the, with the other guy. That's okay. Oh, I might be able to get a web with the Proteus. Okay, we got the web. Cool. Okay, and the Orca pretty much instantly warps. I mean, that's not an insta warp, but that was pretty quick for an Orca, right? It was like a couple seconds. Basically, what we've done here is we've used the webs to reduce the align time for the orca, right? This is a common freighter tactic, but it also works on the orca. Somebody pointed that out to me in the uh, comments of one of the earlier videos, which I thought was really cool. So we've actually demonstrated now that the orca is more than capable of being webbed into a warp. And the Loki is just a specialist at that, so. So we're going to see if we can land and actually potentially warp into the pos at this point. But either way, we're in a, uh, you know, like a safe-ish spot where nobody's going to have a scan of. So what we want to do is go ahead and try to warp to the pos and see if we make it in. You know, we've done everything pretty safe so far. And really, the only time to really interact with me would have been it as soon as I showed the orca on this side. And if you do that... What we do is we overheat our mods and we try to kill the highest DPS unit we see and um, wait for downtime to save us. That's essentially what we do there. So. Honestly, it looks like I'm about to get inside of my pos before the server. Aw, oh, right, right before. <laughs> so close. All right, well, we'll see what happens when we get back in. Yeah, I mean... The Ark is good to go, the new POS is set up, the old POS is just about taken down. And I'm going to roll the hole behind me. So that nobody stumbles upon me. They're going to have to work for it. I mean... Yeah, pretty happy about that. So what we're doing right now is rolling this wormhole. First time on our Nomad Adventure, we're doing this. And basically, the short story is that you essentially go through a wormhole over and over again with an oversized prop mod, which adds a bunch of mass to your ship, which will eventually close the wormhole. Just want to keep checking the info. So, I'm still not crit yet. Okay, see that? So we just passed through it, and we made it go from Shrink to crit. Alright. Now, what does that mean? Good question. Not sure where my ping went. I had a ping here somewhere. There it is. So basically, what this means now is that this hole has 10% or less, or maybe just less than 10% of its total mass quota. And this hole in particular has a two bill mass quota. We're gonna switch ships to another ship. And that ship is gonna be a heavy 
interdiction cruiser. Now, I originally said that I only wanted to use the yacht, but I quickly realized that if I want to roll a hole, there is a fairly decent chance that I'm going to lose the yacht because it's going to get stuck on the other side, and you don't have the ability to fit this the way you used to. Basically, the only way I'm going to close a hole with a yacht is when it's an emergency, and then I'll self-destruct the yacht if necessary. In the interim, what we'll do is we'll simply use the broadsword, which we've brought out here. The broadsword is going to allow us to close this with almost impunity. It'll be very, 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 very hard for this to close with us on the wrong side if we do the broadsword procedure correctly. So, what we've basically done is we've got the hole to crit with the yacht. We're going to go through a couple more times with the yacht, and then we're going to switch to the broadsword. And the broadsword is what's going to allow us to close it safely. Okay, look at that, sweet. So now we gotta fit this up. This fit I have is probably ultra janky. I just found it on Z-Kill. Yeah, it's probably uber janky. That's okay. We'll have fun with it. Let's go ahead and get our modules semi-correct here. Something like that. Oh, we're gonna need some probes just in case the inevitable and the unfortunate happens, let's give you some probes. Cool. All right, so this is the rolling, the fabled rolling, whatever the hell this is, I don't even know what this is. Rolling broadsword. Now the way this works with a heavy interdiction cruiser is that you use these modules called zero point mass entanglers. You use these in order to essentially reduce your mass to zero. So although we know this wormhole is about to collapse, I also know that if I activate these three modules, go through it, look at this. I punch through it and just like that, I get my Proteus cloaked up. We go through it, and there's almost no chance that hole closes, right? Almost no chance of it. But on the return side, we're going to activate a 500 mm micro. And just jump right on through there and try to close it. With a very long ramp up time. Wow, that is extremely long. Start eating cap boosters, why not? But basically, you need to have the micro active when you go through it. Back in the day, you used to be able to go through it and then activate the micro after. But uh, you don't have to. You can't do that anymore. They have changed it. So we're expecting this to close either this time or next time. Ah, it's closed this time. How cool is that? Using just a yacht and a heavy interdiction cruiser, which granted takes up a lot of space in the Orca, but using just those two ships, we're able to safely close any wormhole we want now um, of the major types we use. There's some you can't close, like frigate holes and bigger ones and stuff. But the general idea is that we can close wormholes now. So now we can interact with the chains that we build in a way that we have not been able to do before, thanks to the Victorio Luxury Yacht and the Broadsword. Let's just check out one more thing, the ship maintenance bay. With all these ships in it, it's getting really tight. So we're, not, we're past the point where we can store all of our ships in here with the main. And I'm worried that we're going to get to the point where we can't even pull some of these out. So let's just try to pull our smaller ship out and see if we can. Oh, look at the... Oh my gosh. It's almost exact change. So as long as we can pull our smallest ship out, 
which is the one we're in now, we can still fit everything in here. So it's almost like this is meant to be. Right? This is crazy. I, I did not calculate this. This was just pure luck. So I've managed to find a configuration of ships that give me a wide range of abilities, from catching people to rolling wormholes to doing specialized data and relic sites, general hacking purposes, null sec, rat clearing, all that stuff fits inside the Orca. That's mind-blowing. I'm like... I'm like really happy with what I just discovered. I mean, this could be the dream team, you know? I'm sure we're gonna make changes. Like, I could see this Fipple one day going away. Maybe this going away and combining it in there, but... I think these three ships are not going anywhere, and that's most of it. So, I think we're looking at part of, or perhaps, the Dream Team. With the Loki being what we're sitting in. Pretty darn cool. I am uh, extremely happy with our progress. So, yeah. Get some rest after that one. Yeah, so strangely enough, um, I just found a cloud here that is extremely small. Look how small this cloud is. You can see the size of the venture next to it, right? So this is max zoom. Look how small that cloud is. And what this is, is I actually harvested this gas cloud yesterday before downtime. And I almost finished it, but I just left early. So there's probably very little gas left in this cloud and it shrinks its size based on, yeah, see it just vanished while I'm in the middle of talking about it. I just started. So how much M3 was actually in that cloud? Uh, 100 plus 160 plus 80, yeah, not much, right? Um, it's pretty wild, cause especially cause I never realized they could get that small graphically. I thought there was like stages to it. And also because somebody a couple hours ago a fella from Wingspan just showed me that he found a very small cloud like that too. And, um... Yeah, the fact that I have never seen one and then I see one right after I was told about it, that's pretty strange. Hmm. Interesting, interesting stuff. So one of the benefits that we haven't discussed or really even justified why we moved here of moving to a class 2 with a class 2 and a low static is that we have access to k-space at all times now which seems weird but we've picked a low sec static because if we look at pathfinder here now we can not only build in j-space we can also build a map in k-space and of course we could go to dotland and use their map we're gonna use pathfinder here and the reason for that is simple very very simple because we can store the signatures of the stuff we scan in Pathfinder, right? The one thing I'm looking for from LOSAC primarily is gas sites. That's why I chose this hole. I want to try to mine some LOSAC gas just for fun, see what it's like. So I figured by having a LOSAC static, we can just pop in and try to find some gas as well. But I know there's a ton of funky sites in LOSAC. Um, I didn't fully scan Rafame, but you can see already like we found some weird ones. like. I'm not entirely sure what ships to do that for, but we're probably just going to skip a ton of sites and um, just do things that catch our eye. Like this, you need like a Marauder for, and it's for like ESS stuff. I don't really care. Even if it's profitable, I don't really care to do that. This is too hard for me, I think. Maybe a Bling Fit Loki could do it, but nothing I have. And then this doesn't pay well. So what we do is we just skip them all. Skip them all. No problem. Go to the next one. Just trade it just like a wormhole. Bump around. Do some scanning. Um, the low sec hole is not good for travel. In fact, when we want to go to high sec, we, I mean, we could check our low sec just in case, but we probably just go right to our class two static and then hope for the high sec there. That's probably our way back to Jetta at all times. So this low sec is kind of like, it's a weird static to have. You're pretty much led to areas where there's not many people. So, um, for example, if I could mine asteroids, it'd be kind of good for me, but either way. I just kind of want a little bit of variety. Try something new, you know? Okay, so... We have... Found a Class 4 Shattered System. With, conveniently, a high sec static. So we can seed it very easily. So what we're trying to do right now is, before we do anything... I'm going to scan down all the signatures. And then I'm going to... 
put a seed in here. And then we'll come back and do the relics. Possibly try some gas. Not sure. We will see. Okay, so we have finished scanning down the Shattered. And as you can see, we have a lot of signatures. Um, if we look at them, we'll notice we have... Looks like one data site, pirate data site. Two Sancha relics and a Serpentus relic. Uh, if you're observant, you'll remember that we're in a class 4 right now, and you might be going, why are these spawning in here? Uh, I think I mentioned it a while ago, but just to be extra redundant here, in shattered wormholes, regardless of the class, you have a chance to spawn pirate relic sites. So you will see them even in 4s and 5s that are shattered. So basically what we've done here is we have grabbed the, the signatures for everything. We've put them into Pathfinder. And we have labeled them all. So the only thing that remains is for us to go to the high set connection, which is OIS, map that out. And I'm gonna make a new seed. We're gonna bring it in through the high set connection. And then we're gonna log back on our main account. We're gonna go scan down a couple other systems and give it about an hour or two. And then we'll come back here and take these relic sites as quick as possible. We want to give it time because these systems are heavily camped. When you see probes come out, that's when most people are on the highest alert to gank explorers. So that's kind of how that works. So now we're going to go get a seed and that'll be that. Alrighty, so I have managed to find a seed and put it into this hole this shatter that we just found so let's just save that out of habit and then I will pick an object to warp to perhaps this one warp to our 100 go ahead and wrap a bookmark and when we're like in here somewhere maybe or no in here sorry we will uh, wrap a bookmark and we'll log this guy out and boom we're seated there's our spot and at this point, there's very little that could possibly go wrong. I mean, seeding something is really not a concern, but either way, you now have 011778 inside of J011778. Seems good, right? Work from there and log them out. And then what we'll do is on our main, we will scan a couple other systems, like I said, and come back to this system in a little bit and get those relic sites once anybody that saw me scanning no longer has interest in it so we kind of uh, bounce around to potentially stay a little safer inside the shattereds which are heavily hunted to be clear the shattereds are very popular for hunting explorers so if you're gonna hack there you got to be ready to be quick or you gotta have backup or yeah use your brain All right, so we pop back into the shatter hole a bit early, um, and then I have a strategy for this. So if you're ever going into a situation where you have to hack a bunch of high value sites and you have no control over who has the signatures and you can't put backup on grid because it's a small hole like this, what I like to do is to go through and scan all of the cans with the cargo scanner and not hack any of them. Do that for all of the sites you want to do. And then you want to bookmark the cans that have value. Then, after you've scanned everything and have your bookmarks, then you randomly go between them. And so you're only on a grid for a couple of seconds, 10 seconds or something like that. It's really hard to catch you doing that. It's a strategy I, I use to uh, feel better about doing this with no backup, so it might help you someday. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda show you how I do this. We kinda just glide from can to can and you scan as you fly past them with the micro on, and you're kind of taking a look out. So we have a bookmark here, 13 plus 13. That's two cans that I want to hack, right? Oops, we go to this one. We got a little head over stuff. So we'll scan this one. Anything valuable? No. So we just don't drop a bookmark, right? Easy. Scan this one. The key is to not stop moving, and so that they don't ever get a good position on you, and then to come back. 
But it's really easy, right? And again, maybe this is too paranoid or whatever. I don't like losing ships, personally. So here's a 3 mil. We can put a 3 mil. We might not go to it. Let's go to that one. And so the cheetah, as we've mentioned many times, is actually faster when you cloak. So you can kind of cloak between these cans a little bit. Uh, the only thing is it shuts off your micro, so you want to cloak, and then right when the micro ends, you want to turn it back on. That's kind of the way to leverage that. A little bit of speed boost, but just make sure you don't do it too near the can, or else you can't target it. Small things. Let's scan this one. This should be the last can here. Which is in there. Two mil. We can put a two mil. I highly doubt I'm going to do those. There you go. Once you start locking, you should probably just approach the next thing you want to go to. Kind of works out. Four mil in there, so we just drop a four mil. And then lock some of these up. And there's a bunch right next to each other, so you're gonna have to kind of float around a little bit and use your use your brain here. Alright, so you can kind of clean this up if you'd like. So we had the nine mil here, so we'll just approach the nine mil. We'll drop another bookmark on top of it. Just like this. Really, as long as you're moving around like this, you're pretty darn safe, so should be fine. And then we'll we'll put the four mil up here. Make it cleaner. Alright, so we did this for all the sites. So what we're left with, with is a list of all of the money here. So the first one we want to go to is just 1313. Let's bang that out real fast. Then we'll probably just go for the 9, and I might just leave the rest. I'm not sure if I'll go for all of it. It was just kind of to show the point here. But let's get these two 13 cans so we can at least get some money here. This will probably be the hottest spot here. If somebody pre scanned this and checked all the cans, they would know damn well I'm going to go for these two, but we'll see. See what happens. Okay, yeah, let's start hacking. Keep an eye on our overview here. Oh, just like that, we got 13 million. This is like, you know, not the most useful information, but I like to think about the game like this. We're kind of taking a scenario where I don't have as much control as I want. I'm in a shattered wormhole where I can't fit my strategic cruisers, and I'm trying to creatively come up with ways to uh, essentially stay safer there, despite my normal comfort zone being well out of my grasp, right? See if we can get this real quick without freaking out and dying. Here it is, there it is. Cool, we got it. So now we micro and we cloak. As we can. Or near an LCO. Okay, cool. So we got the 13 of the 13. So let's go for the 9. And you see how you bounce from site to site? It would be very, very hard to track what I'm doing right now. I'm literally popping up at different sites. So if someone was descanning me or keeping eyes, they would have like, for one can, like 30 seconds to react, to get on top of me and to fight me. So it's very hard. Not impossible, but fighting an explorer that does this, trying to gank them, not the easiest thing in the world. But now we sort of, just this is like a supreme cherry pick what we're doing here. We're scanning everything and making informed choices as to where we spend our hacking time, which is the only vulnerable time really. Oops, I can't click. Wow, I'm really having trouble with this. Let's not get carried away here. Cool, we did it. So just because I don't really care so much about the rest of this, um, we're probably gonna bail, but essentially we would delete these bookmarks and then we would just do this for all the cans. So we'd get another eight, 11, 14, uh, 16 million out of it. But again, I don't really care. I just wanted to safely get the biggest cans, and um, we did that, so, cool, back to the hole. So I talked about it a little bit, but I haven't actually done it until just now. Um, I wanted to make my modules better with um, abyssal module stuff, uh, mutoplasmids, right? 
So, originally I had downgraded my guns from ion neutrons to ions so I could fit better tanks on it and better stuff, etc. Right? So now, with mutoplasmids, I realized I can upgrade my guns again to the highest tier, the neutron blasters. And with a little bit of mutoplasmiding, I could fit that. Um, even with the NOS, even with all that stuff. So, basically, what I've done is I've carefully and frugally managed to either buy or roll a bunch of abyssal mods. So here we have damage control that slightly increases my EHP but does create a bit of an explosive hull which is weird. I'm going to replace this but then we have this large abyssal plate which is extremely low power grid usage. This is the key to the whole fit. So we're waiting to turn that on when we get hull upgrades 5. Um, should be a day. And then we have a very cheap Abyssal Mag. We rolled that one ourselves. Got a nice bonus on it. We rolled this for Power Grid. Very cheap to roll all of these. I rolled this with like two mods and got a really nice range roll on it. Um, yeah, look at the range. 11.5 and also a Velocity bonus. And also, noteworthy enough, on the Abyssal Warp Drive, I got a huge Velocity bonus. A nice activation bonus and a power grid bonus. So that's a really nice abyssal uh, micro warp drive we have there. And we kept the scram as is because we compared the prices. And really, this module right here, the Shadow Serpentis, is just by far the best value for range. So we're going to leave that one as is instead of gambling it away. And lastly, we put a Mutoplasmid on our Nosferatu, which we got a really good roll on that as well. Although it hurt our fitting ability, we got almost the maximum energy transfer. Look at that bar. Almost maximum. That was our first roll. And we got a huge optimal range bonus. So this actually really was a big upgrade for our NOS, which is great because we're very cap hungry. Now that leads me to my second thing. As I'm updating my characters and making them better and better, updating the fits, I'm always looking for ways to add new systems and improve the strength of them. One thing I've done on my main that I have just now done on this character is introduce boosters. Now, I wasn't entirely sure what booster to use for this guy, but I noticed that capacitors seem to be my biggest issue, so I want the Mind Flood booster. Pretty much what these are for is if you ever are in a scenario where you need to fight for your life, you activate these and you become a little stronger, right? Boosters are pretty self-explanatory. The last thing I did... Ooh, maybe this guy's using my hole. Look at this. Oh, it's a Mastodon. Yeah, they're using my hole. Holy crap. Wait a second. That's wild. Maybe I could farm that. Anyway, the last thing I did was I put implants. Um, where are the augmentations? So you basically just pick an array of cheap implants. And uh, power grid, damage, 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 armor, that kind of thing. And that increases the strength of your character. Alright, so here we have a little gate camp with some um, Sino action going on. Not exactly sure what happened, but we're in an interceptor right now, so we're pretty dying safe. So let's actually take a look and see what they're doing. We have another 20 seconds or so before we gotta warp off. Sun. Huh. Like they're just permanently tanking the gate guns or what? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, let's warp off. Really not a lot of fast tackle there. It's just the Akade and maybe the Arazus are fit for it. I'm not really sure what their plan is. Maybe they're just going for big targets? Could be. Either way. Pretty easy to get out of that. Kinda neat though. Oh, I know, that's kind of cool. Somebody stuck a bubble up at the entrance to the... Electrical storm in Esoteria this weekend. Kind of funny. I mean, it doesn't really stop us, but... Kind of funny nonetheless. So if you're in a bubble, and you have an interdiction nullifier, make sure you activate it before you leave your gate cloak. Right? You can use both of these modules and boosters while you're in a gate cloak. So make sure you take advantage of that. Apparently, the, um... 
the color of the explosion of the can when you fail it or blow it up is related to the loot. So this has blue and orange loot inside, right? So tech two and tech one. If we blow this can up, look what color shoots out. It's blue. See that? But what I've learned is that if there's no tech 2 salvage or whatever this stuff is inside of it, then it'll be orange. And if there's no loot whatsoever, it'll be like gray or something. I forget. We're going to try to see all that. But both of these have both types in them, so we'll take these. We'll hopefully get one on the next. Hopefully we get one down here. I also wouldn't mind a lot of money in these cans either, to be fair. Okay, look, so here's orange. So technically this is all tech one, so if we blow this can up, it should be orange, which is wild to me. So that's tech two, with the blue ring. And then orange looks like this. See that? Isn't that crazy? I, I've been playing the game for a while. I don't know when this was added. I don't know. Look how small the explosion is too. It's wild, right? And I think if you just have like a carbon or nothing there and you blow it up, it's like a little mini gray explosion or something like that. But it's just little details like that I don't pick up on. And uh, when I finally do learn of them, they kind of blow my mind a little bit. So yeah, who would have thought? There's like a Helios hacking in this system right now, and I'm really sad about it. Because I might have to kill him. Let's see where he's at, I'm actually not sure. I'd prefer not to kill things in my system, that would be ideal. Yes. I think I'm gonna not kill him. Is that weird?
ship scan him. I have the ship scanner over here, so what we're gonna do is take a look at him, point him. Go inertial stab. I think we can scan him multiple times. Maybe I should try to forcefully invite him to the combo. Oh, he dropped his loot. Good. This guy just dropped his loot. He's dropped 80 mil on the ground for me. And I just let him go. So what we just did right there was we just made more money than if we killed him. And we also managed to not kill him in our system to give it away on Z-Kill, right? We really don't want to kill people in our system to give it away. So this guy just basically gave us um, the best case scenario, right? He managed to keep our Z-Kill clean and he just paid us his full loot. If we killed him, we only would have got like half of that, so. I didn't even say a word to him in local. I just walked up, pointed him, and he dropped his loot. And I let him go without a word. That was cold, man. That was really cold. Okay, I've been sitting here doing a couple data sites in my system, just trying to clear them out. And I've been really frustrated with how hard it is. I just realized I'm using a Data Analyzer 1. I never upgraded the Cheetah's fit to a Data Analyzer 2 after I hit Hacking 5. I was too excited about the Astero. <laughs> so, yeah. Kind of awkward, but I'm happy I caught it and I didn't just drive myself nuts forever. Sheesh. Anyway. That was my, uh, innocuous but still obnoxious mistake of the day, I think. Okay, so we found a little hare in here who apparently wants to hack, I guess, is his story. Which is perfectly reasonable. Um... I suppose maybe I warp too fast. Let's cloak the saber up real fast. Thought he'll notice that. Try to get right on top of him. So let's wait till he goes to the next can. Eh. It's taking too long. I'll warp and if he goes for another can, by the time I get here, I'll just... I'm not moving, I'm just gonna go for it then. I'll warp the Proteus back after the Saber begins. And now we just pilot the Saber. Maybe acted pretty quick to the saber landing on grid, but there's not a whole lot you can do, I'm gonna be honest. If there's a hyperspatial saber, I mean, by the time you notice it, it's already landed and dropping a bubble, so it's gotta be far enough away from you. Not much you can do in a chip that can't, uh, yeah. He 
Either way, I love getting saber practice. I think, um... It's a fun thing to do, and it might matter one day. I want to show you something real quick that I discovered that I thought was really cool. If you're ever in a site, or really anywhere, and you want to ping, and warping off and warping back is too slow or not an option, you do something like this. This doesn't always work, but it works a lot of the time. If you pinpoint your probes, put them at 1 AU, and then center them on you, I believe they go to a random point on the grid. Yep, see how this just went to a random point? Now we can warp to that one. But if you click pinpoint and center and 0.25, just like this, I think it goes right to you. Yep, see how it goes right to you. I, I think that can be described with possibly floating decimal point rounding issues. I think that when we use the 1AU size and center it on ourselves, it actually doesn't do all the math to get right where we are. It just puts it on grid. So let's try that one more time. Oh, we, yeah, see how it moves? That's what it is. So we can even test this even further now that I'm thinking about it. If we go one size bigger to two, I bet this is even less accurate and it's even further away. Let's find out. 262 away. See that? I think we can probably do this all the way up to the max. So if we go, we'll skip two. We'll go to eight. See where this thing ends up. Look how far away that is. See that? 900 km. And I guess for the logical conclusion, let's go all the way to 32 AU and then run that. Look at that. That's like a far grid ping. So this is actually really cool. I didn't really think about this on how you could potentially leverage this, but essentially the way to do this, I think we've just figured it out, is you can click center, you can click pinpoint, and you can go all the way down to one. But after you've done all of those things, then you need to increase it to one AU. Otherwise it'll drop it right on you. What's creating the gap between you and this probe is when you increase the size because the game doesn't want to do the long math to find the exact amount of 0.0000 etc AU it needs to move this. This is not reliable, this is not good, this is not something you're going to probably use all the time, but um, for example this would be an amazing way to get pings on gates, right? It would only take your scan time per gate to get a nice ping on each gate you go to, right? You go through the gate, you launch probes, go bing, 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 center it on you, bring it up to like 8 or something, and run it. And you got your ping, just like that. So, kind of creative thinking here. I mean, again, not so useful, but... Um, yeah, the fact that you can right-click probes, which I probably should have led with, you can right-click probes and bookmark them and save locations. Um, and I'll show you that real fast here just to make it really obvious what we're doing. So here are our probes. If you right click them, you can save the location of them. No clue why. And we know with a bookmark you can warp to them. So we're combining that mechanic with the rounding issue of probes to create bookmarks on grid without actually warping off and back. How cool is that? Okay, I'm gonna need a uh like an explanation for this one because I am just perplexed as to what I'm watching here. Okay, let me give you a little bit of background. And yesterday, we had a low set connection that brought us to the place we did a little dead site we're goofing around at, just having some fun in low sec, right? Nothing eventful. The signature to go to low sec was JKC, right? And I remember making this and a ping for it. So I had this led to low sec yesterday and this was the ping for it. I am currently at the ping. All right, you with me? Here's the ping. If we zoom out even further, you can see here is the wormhole signature that we bookmarked, right? Now, 
This is very uninteresting so far, and you're probably going, what the heck are you talking about? But if you looked around at the UI a little bit, you'd have noticed that we have a signature here called JKC that is located directly next to where I am right now that leads to LOSEC. I don't understand what I'm witnessing here. And just to be thorough, let's just do this. Let's go ahead and launch some probes. We'll just warp off so we're not a sitting duck. And if we pull these to us and move them here and scan this down, I'm going to warp to the new JKC. So remember, we're leaving the bookmark of JKC, our low sec static that we made yesterday. And we are en route to the signature JKC, which leads to low sec which is our new static. And it's in a different location. The other one was in Amar, this one's near Minmatar. This is blowing my mind. So essentially what has happened here, <laughs> look at this. I, I use the same notation, why would I not, right? What's happening here is somehow, my static yesterday to low, my low sec static yesterday was JKC. Today, my low sec static is JKC. And somehow, miraculously, the same first three letters, same celestial spawn, same side, and the same static the very next day. I don't even know what to say about that. I'm not superstitious, but like, statistically, that seems improbable. Okay. Now this is cool. This is what I've been waiting for. So one of the main reasons I wanted to have a low sec static for a while was uh, I wanted to mine low sec gas. I've never done it. I think the only reason I know what it looks like is because I killed a venture there. No idea how profitable it is. All right, let's check out what low sec gas is all about. Now I mined some wormhole gas earlier today. It popped out of the hole, and here I am in low sec. I need more gas. Pretty gassy. So it looks like there's two clouds. They're kind of spread out a little bit, something like that. Um, and then we just orbit. Yeah, orbit like normal. Cool. And uh, I don't think these clouds hurt us, right? So these are Mycosaracens, right? Mycosaracens? I'm not sure how to pronounce that word. But these are the uh, lesser of the two booster gases, right? These ones don't hurt you, but the stronger ones, the Cytosaracens, those explode whenever you're mining them constantly, so you have to have a little tank on your venture. I'd love to find one of those and see what the damage is like, but I suspect that we would be fine with uh, a hardener and a damage control, but who knows? Maybe you'd have to take breaks while mining them. Never know. Okay, the first cloud is clear. We're shooting over to the second one here. There goes one of my ventures. There's another. There's a third one. They're flying over there. So I had a quick chat with my venture pilots and they decided to uh, go on strike and be lazy. And they're just going to sit here in the middle of the cloud instead of orbiting it. Um, I mean, I was kind of pissed, but they said it would save on fuel, so... Yeah, the uh, Venture pilots are quite persuasive when they want to be. 
I think we work our ventures a little too hard around here, don't you think? I mean, we make a mine in harsh conditions and dealing with sabers and... Yeah, they have a tough life, so... We're gonna give them a little break here. I'll let them sit in the middle of the cloud and hang out and have, have some coffee. Watch some TV, so... Yeah. That was so awesome that we were able to get all of that gas site in three ventures. That would not be possible with Syndicate or Tech 1 scoops since they have no residual waste, but with Tech 2s, the residual waste is almost perfect change. You might get uh, a little bit more than you can carry, but either way, not a huge deal. Okay, the final verdict on that blue cloud was 73 million. And I think... What was that, like 35 minutes or something? Not bad for low sec, I'm going to be honest. Interesting. I definitely kind of enjoyed that. So we're not just going to be farming fullerites anymore. We're going to be farming mycosaracens and cytosaracens and stuff. This is pretty cool. <laughs> wonder if I can sneak into null sec sometime too and do that gas. So there's a cheetah for some reason in here. Not sure what that's about. I just popped on. I always have to see too. Weird. Maybe I could run and go get my sa my saber. Maybe possible. We can try it. Hmm. He's gone. He's gone. That's okay. Let's still get the saber and see if we can find him. He might have gone through that C2. I'm gonna go through here just in case he did go through here. If he's right there, I can just catch him. Oh, he's still in here. He's totally still in here. Okay. Well, here's what we'll do. We'll just orbit this. Yeah, he's scanning the low now. Okay. Oh, that's reasonable. I wonder if we can... Oh, oh yeah, if we can... Oh, yeah. So we'll get him on the return. We'll, we'll get him the polarization if he pops through and comes back. Since it's a K-space hole. Alright, so essentially what I think is going to happen is I think he's going to... He's checking the holes as he scans them probably, right? He's going to check this one. And he's going to see it's low and he's going to go through. I expect him to come back through. And when he does that, that's when I nab him. There he is. Look at that. Okay, so we decloak. Go through. What's his name? Okay, so he went through. Beautiful. So now we go through. And now we go to DWS. As soon as humanly possible. We warp. So basically as soon as he comes through we do two things. We activate the micro and the um, bubble. If he comes back through. We may have read this wrong, but I have a feeling they'll come back through. Usually they just scan the other side, hang out for a little bit. If they wait five minutes for polarization, that's the smartest thing they can do. But... We'll still try to get him on the other side. Probably unlikely though without a bubble. Oh, still nothing. I don't want to form a fleet here. There it is. Alright, we activate. And now we just wait. Wait for him to show up. Got him.
I'm gonna kill him quickly. Take his pod too. I was a little slow on the um I should have immediately you know put the drones on assist. But that's okay. That was still pretty good. Let's kill his pod quickly. Just in case he has implants. And loot it. 48 mil. Cool. That was a pretty surgical little gank there. I got the decloak. It was a sloppy decloak. I'm not I'm not gonna lie, my adrenaline was really high. Um I don't know about you, but when I get in PvP, if I'm not prepared, like if it springs up on me like this, I get really nervous, so. No shame there. Cloak up and get the Proteus safe. There you go, another example of polarization. This time we combined um, a low sec gate and polarization, which functions the same as a high sec, no biggie. Oh, we can't warp off, so let's just jump through the hole. Oh, now we can warp off. Oh, we already went through. <laughs> anyway, um, so we combined polarization and we combined the saber placement and hiding of the saber with um, assisting drones and decloaking, and we kind of put it all together to like, get a nice little kill, so. Really happy about that one. Um, you know, Loot Fairy said yes. Loot, Loot Fairy said heck yes. I got all the good stuff. So, he had, um, my boy had 96 scanner probes. I don't know if he needed that many, but either way. Interesting kill. Now, I suppose I should do some research on him to see if um, they're about to fight me or something, but either way. No biggie. So just because I said I would, I'm back here at the uh, Cheetah's Wreck, trying to salvage it with a venture with bare bones drone skills with salvaging drones. So um, this could take years. All right, here we go. We got double the manpower on the job. Double the manpower. Okay, I refuse to give up. I just jumped like 12 jumps to buy a bunch of salvagers. I'm salvaging this damn cheetah, I don't care. You can't stop me. Okay, so now I have four drones and six salvagers. Yes, we were like one shot it. What did we get for all that effort? What did we get? 800,000 isk. Completely worth it. I only spent one million on salvagers, so. Super worth it. Sarcasm, by the way. Salvage sucks. Yeah, so because I killed somebody in my system, um, I am interested in moving because it gives away where I'm at on Z-Kill. I'm going to try to not kill people in my system moving forward, but... The fact of the matter is we did, so I'd like to keep my eyes open for a new hole, or we could jump into low sec and fill them in back to Jetta and reset, right? Right. Currently I'm looking for a new hole. Because we have two class fours that opened up next to me, right? This one we're in now is a class two or class four. With a class 2 and a class 1 hole, which is interesting. It's strange to me that this static configuration, you know? Very strange. Hm. Anyway, let's go and look at the other one before we scan this one down. I want to know what the other C4 is. Because it's 3 hours until downtime. If we're going to move... We should probably have our plan set up immediately. Alright, that is just absolute insanity. I, I am literally blown away with how long that probably took to set up. Good God. Look at that. That's like... A, 
This is what the game used to be like before Citadels, right? You'd have bosses that were elaborate like this. It's funny, like, the way I have mine set up is very similar to his. I mean, this is like not like I invented it or anything, right? It's just hardeners up here, guns up there. And he's got these racks of E War. I mean, all of this is E War. Oh, no, okay, he has racks of guns in there, okay. So it goes E War, gun, E War, gun. I mean, I see this and I go, why does nobody kill this? But then again, maybe all these modules make it really just absolutely ridiculously annoying. I mean, look at this. They're literally in here building like, there's none of the big ones, right? Okay. Yeah, this is crazy. Needless to say, we're not moving in here. All right, so here we have a unrated complex called a Garista Outpost. It's really not too hard. There's rats in here that jam and disrupt you, which is, I guess, scary, but I mean, we have scouts on the things. I'm not too worried. I can usually break the, uh, darn, we didn't get the escalation. But um, we can usually have plenty of time if somebody comes to kill us, even if we're scrammed inside of these pockets like this, so I'm not too worried about it. But either way, let's see what we got from that drop since we didn't get the escalation. Hopefully we got something good out of it. No. Negative. Bunch of bad stuff. Okay. Okay, so I found another outpost right after the first one, and um, I'm having too much fun using my Loki as a drone bunny for my other two ships. Just have this huge swarm of drones just going to town. Which, if you're a multi-boxer, is not going to look interesting, but if you've never multi-boxed, this might look funny to you. You basically are uh, dealing with 15 drones here. So anyway, I think we didn't get the commander spawn, which means we won't get the escalation, but that's okay. No big deal, right? No big deal. Hey, there's this guy trying to combat scan my yacht. I'm not sure what he's doing. Pretty weird. Oh, there he is. Weird. I'm gonna go for this guy, why not? See what happens. Oh, really? Really? So I think the Heron just went in here. It looks awful like he went in there. So I'm just gonna sit here and if it splashes in like a minute or less, I'll just kill him. Because he'll have polarization. But that's assuming he comes back out. It is a Jetta connection, so you never know. Hmm. Doesn't look like the heron's coming back through. Oh, there it is. There it is. We can't run. He's going for freedom. There will be no freedom. 
here to scan you. Oh, he's too far. Aw, oh, I just gotta kill him then? That's lame. Oh, he's not too far to scan. What am I talking about? But I guess I'm gonna have to kill him here. Guess he's gonna get out of the bubble. There you go. Let's cloak up. I was trying to spare him, but I guess he just wasn't having it. Paladin. Oh. I see. I see, I see, I see. How interesting. What the hell am I watching? Oh, is it in a it's in a pause? Oh shit, it's that one of these segs? Are you kidding me? Where the hell is it? The paladin is now magically gone. Oh, he's in here? Oh, sh this is no way, right? We'd have to go reship immediately into the Loki. And even then, we're really pushing it. I think the pilgrim has to reship? I don't even know. Maybe I do keep it like this. I don't know, man. Combat scanners now. Oh, sh the, the paladin's getting ganked? Holy crap. Really? No, I think the paladin's about to get bopped. Can I hold on it, maybe? <laughs> oh, here's the paladin. Who the heck is that? Oh my god. I can't believe somebody started combat scanning the second I see a free paladin. Well, not a free, like a paladin I might be able to deal with. Unreal. That's okay, it's just how the game goes, I guess. I don't understand this. How can this hole be end of life, but the other side of it not be end of life? Like... Do I need to warp off and warp back? This is weird. Am I too far from it over here? I'm gonna warp to the sun and warp back. I shouldn't have to refresh it. Like, I don't understand how that's even the case. Oh my god, you have to warp off and warp back? Are you Wait, no. What? This was totally end of life already, and it wasn't showing it. I warped off and warped back, and now it shows it. That's weird. So it doesn't replace this object until somebody warps to it? That That's weird. I don't understand that. Maybe because when you crit or shrink it because you're going through it, it triggers it, but nothing triggers this from this side. So the object never gets updated. Or maybe I'm missing something obvious, I'm really not sure. Yeah, also, um, unrelated, well, kind of related, we're moving to another class 2 with a 2 and a low. And the reason for that is we killed somebody in our old system, so we kind of gave it away. So no more of that. Even if it's a juicy kill, I'm going to avoid it. Unless I'm willing to move for it, so. Yeah. We're going to do a quick move here during downtime. See what we can get away with. Workers off. And we cloak these guys up. Goes back through. And then this guy goes to a safe. And that concludes the move up. Now we have this guy sitting at a safe, and when we down finish downtime, we'll just move him right into the pot safely. Nice and easy, right? And we'll come back in after downtime, move our ventures, pick up the stick, move it in, rebuild the pot. Everything should be done in under half an hour. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Look how long this one's taken. Seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12. There you go. See, that was a long one. Because the orc is in a safe that's really hard to find and nobody scanned me, it's pretty safe to log him on and warp him around. We're not too fussed on that. By the way, I guess this is more time sensitive, so maybe it is better I do it this way. Not sure. Not sure. There's no guide for this. I'm kind of just winging it, you know what I mean? And we'll go ahead and scoop it. Decloak. Scoop. Warp off. Good to go. We have now completed our move. Normally at this point we would go to the signature and we would roll it. But... We don't need to do that. Why? Because it's going to close on its own. Okay, so I've wanted to do this ever since I got all these POS mods. I think you can select them all and launch for Corp and it just dumps them out. Oh, it dumps one of each out. It's still pretty cool. So we can just do another dump, dump, dump. Look at that, all those mods come out. Oh, we gotta wait. Look at that, now we can just take our time and anchor them all. Cool. There's an Imicus in my system. So I can't kill him, but... Maybe I can spook him? Have some fun with him? I think he was at a safe up here. Maybe here? Yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna combat scan him. Here. Hmm. Not entirely sure where he is. We'll just try to scan him. See if he notices. Kinda want him to just leave. I missed him with the second scan. Probably too slow. Let's see what happens. Right, I'm not going to kill this guy. I'm either going to scare him and let him go or try to ransom him. Not sure what the plan is here. He's pretty quick, this one. Here we go. Another safe. We're gonna get him? Oh, we got him, cool. Hooray. It's so annoying that I don't want to kill him, right? But he won't play ball with the thing. Oh well. Well, we're gonna let him go. I refuse to kill him in my fresh system. Enjoy, little buddy. It'd be great if you could leave, though. Um, yeah, we're not killing people on our system anymore, even if it's a free kill like that. doesn't matter. The point is to stay a little bit more incognito. So I found a low-sec gas site where the gas is worth more than any of the fullerites we harvest. Of course, it's not as readily available, but I still thought it was really cool how much this stuff is worth. It is worth more than even 540 and 320, which is cool. And there's a ton of it here in this site. Sadly, when I showed up, somebody was already mining it in a prospect, and I had to chase them off. So we missed a lot of the gas in here. But yeah, pretty dang cool that we're still able to get so much gas from even Losec. Who would have thought? Okay. Uh. I am in Jitta on my main character, sitting in this feeple. 
and you'll see we have three little baby kill marks there on it. Okay. Right here. Where my mouse is in the middle of the screen. Um, oh, we can zoom in more. Yeah, right here. So this feeple is something we've been using for a while to clear small gas sites, to scan around in null sec and low sec, to deal with killing small tackle ships, to do quick combat scans, and to do things that uh, pretty much let us be a little bit braver than we normally are because of the cheapness of it, right? Okay. So it's a cool ship. A lot going on with it. We haven't lost it. Haven't really got any true fights with it or anything. We have used it a fair amount. I really like this ship. But I also like other things. And you don't always need to stay with something forever just because you like it. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to take our friend, Mr. Sveeple here. And we're going to strip him down. Strip him down. Throw them in here, right? So all these modules, go ahead and package them up. Cool. Now we're going to leave the rigs on here, and we're also going to leave the ship here. Because if it has kill marks on it, it's kind of a shame to repack it up to sell it just for 50 mil, right? We'll hold on to it. Maybe we'll use the sweeple again soon. Who knows? Anyway, so we have a bunch of mods here. We'll sell them for 40 mil. What are we going to do without his people? Hmm. You probably already figured out that we're going to change that into something, right? And if you were paying attention at the start of this little bit here, you would have seen that I have Kaldari Destroyer 5 and Kaldari Tactical Destroyer 3 trained up here in the queue. And what that does for us is unlocks and allows us to relatively competently uh, fly a jackdaw. Granted, we're going to train more if we like it. We're going to max out what we need to max out. But this will get us in. We have decent missile skills anyway. So why a jackdaw? Why is this ship something interesting? Well, there's one... I mean, yeah, it's it's got a ton of stuff going on. But there's one thing in particular that really caught my eye. And I've used this ship historically a couple times, but nothing really crazy, mostly fleet stuff. But for solo work, I saw this right here. 66% bonus to light missiles and rocket velocity while it's in sharpshooter mode. And I'm like, okay, well this makes sense. This ship is generally considered a kitey, snipey fit, right? You have long range. But I started thinking, I'm like, man, this could be strictly better than this people. If I can warp to 100 and stuff and just start putting 250 damage per second on it from 100 kilometers away... In places like low sec, that allows me to do clear small plexes, like um, unrated sites and dead sites and stuff like that. I can harass people off gas sites. I can do all of that pretty much risk-free. Um, it, it's extremely hard to catch this thing because you're so far away and you're shooting from so far away that if anything does get near you, you just peace out, right? So I, I think I want to switch to a jackdaw and try out a little bit of low sec crawling around with that and doing some sights and having a fun time and we're going to replace the sweeple since we only have limited room in the orca so to do that i'm going to train some skills here and i'm not going to train them the old-fashioned way i'm going to train them the impatient way now i could move some stuff around buy an extractor extract some stuff from one of the guys I'm planning to extract anyway and inject it in here. But I thought about it and it just makes a lot more sense if I just use some of the SP I have. I can always replenish this later. I don't really care. I like having this SP for moments just like this one where I have an interest and I want to act on it. I've put in some research and I kind of understand what I'm getting into here. So basically what this does is if we drop 500,000 skill points, 520, this allows us to sit in a jackdaw. Go ahead and do that. We still have 780,000 left, which is which is cool. No problems there. And let's throw in a couple more skills here. Just from our clipboard. And then these three down here would be the jackdaw ones. 
which we'd probably want to do first. Now, okay, so we can fly a jackdaw. Sweet. Let's go ahead and buy one. We'll fit it out. We're not going to go in depth into the fitting. All you need to know is that it has huge bonuses to range, missile range. So you just fit a long range missile system, a micro warp drive, and a bunch of missile computers. So you'll see it when we get going, but I'm not going to stress it because it is per it's fairly straightforward what we're doing. We're not building a good ship. We're building the right ship for us. We're building a ship that allows us to stay ridiculously safe in low sec while still doing some content. So Let's fit that out and then we'll uh, take a look at it when it's back in the hole and uh, yeah, be happy. Alright, so we have the jackdaw which, if I turn on my scripts, I'm shooting out to 111 kilometers with this thing. So I can shoot almost to there. Shoot to like here. That's pretty cool. So what I want to do with this is just prowl around low sec and just do some ratting sites and chill. And I'm also going to try to do this ordinary perimeter, but I'll do that later when... Um, my system hasn't been so active, or when it isn't so active, rather, so. What I'll do now is just go to low sec. And let's see, because it just rolled over, this is a fresh static. We can remove that bookmark. Copy these in, ignore these. All right. Get rid of our old low sec. And our C2 is about to roll over as well. So we're going to have some fresh content here to play with. But um, yeah, so I put like a really cheap skin on the Jackdaw. Because the base color was really lame looking. I really didn't like it. So we just put the blue skin on. It was like one mil. I don't really care. Oh, let's save that. TVG, low static. Go through it. And this ship doesn't even have a point. So like we're not really killing anybody. But you know. We can have fun with it. There's a heron, randomly. Funny. Huh. Wild. Well, let's just shoot him. I mean, heck, what do we got to lose? We don't have a point on this because this isn't a PvP ship. This is like a... PVE avoidance ship kind of thing. So we'll just chill. But that's not to say a dude couldn't die. I mean, it absolutely could be the case that this guy's just AFK and we just snuck up on him while he was uh, hacking for something. In which case, he'll die in a couple shots. Should I kill him from like 100 kilometers away? <laughs> it'll warp off though, right? Hold on, let's warp at like Let's warp at 70 and just see what happens. <laughs> this is so dumb. Alright, so you gotta switch to sharpshooter mode and then run your computers. And then... Presumably... You can just lock and shoot. You know? Oh my god, he's right on me. I happen to go right in his range. Oh my god, we one-shot him! That was crazy! So we just warped him at 70, it just so happened that he was burning right at me. And I landed on top of him. Okay, what does he have? What the heck was that? And I one-shot him with one missile, I wasn't expecting him to die like that. 3 mil. That was weird. Kill his corpse here. Yeah, we popped out of that wormhole and like in 60 seconds landed and killed him. Wow. Wow, this ship's already got a kill mark. It's been in the wild for a minute. Amazing. Yeah, so that doesn't really, that shouldn't really happen, but we can shoot people, we just can't hold them, so. How much damage did that do to him? Seven, 920, I one-shot him. Oof. That was pretty funny. <laughs> okay, so in the Jackdaw, you can go to the Ordinary Sites. 
the ones with the towers that blap you, I normally take a while to kill them with my staple. And you can just sit at over 100 km and shoot them. And they do no damage because they can't shoot past 100 km. Yeah. So this is ridiculously chill. Pretty much just orbit. And I guess you can turn your micro on if you want. Why not? You order with your Micron. Hard to scan down, hard to catch. You can snipe these towers. And even if you take a shot or two, you've got enough EHP to just warp off. How do you not like that? Wild. Really quite a fan of this. What a cool ship. Yeah, so no joke, I actually did it. I fit my ventures up for combat. They have, uh... They have scrams now. And they have hobs. Hobgoblin ones, because we're ballers. And some tank rigs and some shield, and they have a newts. So now... Um... If, like, an Astero comes to gank me, I don't run anymore. I just stand there and kill the Astero, or try to. They could probably tank it, but I'll... I'll try. It'll be fun. I, um... I like this idea a lot better. Making the ventures kind of a fun thing to kill. With some risk instead of just, uh... Running all the time. So, with our fingers crossed, somebody will try to gank us... Here. At some point. Even if it's a saver, I might go for it. I mean, the damage we do is really anemic, but we can shut off, like the tackle and the prop mods and stuff so we can probably pick up a kill with these ventures we'll always trade up and as long as we remember to jettison the gas before we die we can just come back and scoop it right so kind of a fun approach to mining gas I never really engaged in much before I think I had a scram on it for a while but I never really thought about it and took it seriously but now I have like you know, a bunch of hobgoblins. When I get the fourth account back, probably within less than a week now, when I resub everybody, I'm gonna have four ventures with hobgoblins, and I'll probably put the uh, integrated ones or navy ones in there instead. And then it's gonna be eight fed navy hobgoblins, right? With four scrams, four newts. Like that actually is that will kill most of the cruisers and destroyers, right? So yeah, these are no longer a free kill. Okay, I'm getting like super carried away with this, but I just staggered the release of all the drones. And now they're in this like line and they're slowly crawling back towards us. So I, what I hope will happen is it will slowly make a spiral. So I bet if I look at this right here and lock it to the cloud and leave it, I'll just leave it right there. I bet it makes a spiral. I'll zoom it up or zoom. I'll speed it up. Yeah, that one. Well, it's downtime in five minutes and I'm full, so I don't really have much reason to stay. But you can kind of see how when we go around the other side, they break their spiral form. But when we get back to this side, they go back to it. Um, and that just has to do with when we release them and what their behavior is. I mean, this is all just for fun. I just kind of like uh, seeing what happens when you do stuff. So we're doing that. Now what we do is we turn our micros off, get our probes back. We can approach this to speed that up. I'm going to warp back to the old hull and prepare for downtime. Cool. I totally forgot I'm using a giant freight container now. Enormous freight container. And um, I don't really know what the mechanics are still, so I need to scoop that up immediately. Or the contents, rather. And nice, we're close enough. Ooh, we only have like a minute left. Wasn't that much money, but we still want to make sure we bank anything we do get, because it's really demoralizing if you lose stuff, so. I'm kind of curious to see if this enormous freight container is there when we get back. We will find out. Okay, that's kind of funny. It looks like... The container, uh... Is yellow after downtime. 
but it's still here. Interestingly enough. Interesting. Stain. Hmm. Very interesting. Magnate, that's cool. Randomly just caught the magnet. I'm gonna let the pod go. Got him. I'm gonna scan him. Couple more bubbles so he doesn't, uh, yeah. Yeah, he has a thing. He has nothing of value on him. Okay, we let him go then. Helios. That's wild. Went to the sun. Can I get there? Can I get the Helios? Maybe he blew his module already. Hmm. It's pretty fun. I'm just running around Nullsec chasing stuff. Crazy magnet and a Helios just ran into a bubble I put for a pod. It's like what? What is this?
I think I found an Ishtar here. Looks like he's pretty soft. They can go for it, I think. Did I jump too fast? Did I really screw that up? Oh no. Oh, there he is. Oh, the Ishtar's coming in hot. Alright, we jump through on the Saber. This guy's a grass. We should be able to chew him up with the Proteus right now. Hopefully. Hopefully. He's nuding me. Nice. See if I can get him. I think we can get him with all this heat. Now we start overheating stuff. A little bit. Break him. Oh, we did it. Oh, his pod got out. I was a little slow on that. Oh, hilarious. Pretty cool. That was like the first time anybody ever fought back on this whole adventure. Wild. Okay, so we killed this guy, and he said hello to us, so he decided to say he can't get back to Amar. I'm assuming he has implants, but otherwise he would have self-destructed, so we're going to give him a ride back to Amar. And then this hole should get him close. I mean, why not? He was a good sport about me 3 v wanting him. Might as well give him a ticket back. Alright guys, that was episode 8 of A Nomad Tale, and uh, yeah, I couldn't be happier with where I am and where I'm going. I've expressed how comfortable I am, I've proven with my actions that I'm just here for fun. I'm not here to ruin anyone's day, 
I'm not even here expecting anything. I'm just going out there, scanning, seeing what's up, and interacting with the people I run across. So, yeah, this series might go on for a while. I uh, kind of expected to wrap it up at some point, but this is light years better than I ever anticipated. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one, huh?